Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Whiskey Dictionary. Tonight, I have an awesome guest. We've got um, Kyle from Bourbon Blind. Um, why don't you go ahead and say hi? Hi, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> I know that was a heck of an intro. Huh? <laughs> Just ready to do it. Um, Let's do it. Anyway, so why don't, why don't you tell people about your channel real quick? So we do uh, blind whiskey reviews. It's usually me and one other person, so you get a little bit more of a um, two people's views. You know, sometimes you don't always like the same thing. And um, yeah, we taste everything blind. We give it a, uh, we go through, you know, your nosing, tasting, color, all that kind of stuff. And then um, we do a, instead of like a, you know, I give this like an 87, we'd say how much we would be willing to pay for a bottle. Um, you know, because coming from a drinking perspective, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. that's what it really comes down to is would I buy this or would I not? You know what I mean? So, you know. I like to collect bottles, but in the end, it's all going to get open and drank. So, speaking of collecting bottles, so like about two seconds before we went live, you were just telling me how many bottles do you have? It was a, an obscene amount. Um, this is live, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> um, there's about 130 open bottles, and probably between three and 400 that are not open. Oh my God, you have that many that are not open. <laughs> <laughs> now, he don't, say judge that me. don't judge me. <laughs> I, I knew the 130. I didn't know the other three. Yeah, that's just the opens. <laughs> that's insane. Now, how uh, how did you end up acquiring so many bottles? That's that's an insane amount. I travel a lot for work, and uh, okay. I have like severe fear of missing out, like severe FOMO. <laughs> so I like, especially when I see a, like a, a store pick of something. Yeah. Whether it be Four Roses, Russell's Reserve, you know, Elijah Craig, I'm like, ooh, that's a different barrel. I have to get that. So, you know, I just, <laughs> there's probably, I think I have, I, have a, I have a spreadsheet and there's like 70 something bottles of Four Roses. Oh my God. Store picks. Are, they're all different store picks. Like they're all basically different. I would imagine. There's probably one. at least 55 or 60 of them that are different. That's crazy. Now, you know, as far as the, actually, I was, it's funny, I was going to get into this later, but I want to just jump into this because that number is still a little staggering. <laughs> I, I really don't like to say it out loud. <laughs> no, it's, it's totally. It's, you, you look back you are, on it. You're you like, are among yeah. friends here, <laughs> the people in the crowd, although they, they seem a little bit, uh, in, I guess, also staggered. But uh, impressed is probably a better word. So 55 different four roses. Now, yeah how much variation i know that there there is variation just built into the store picks obviously and right, right. the single barrel itself so do you notice a significant difference or do you kind of learn that they're all similar you know i mean between like the different recipes like the different recipes definitely taste different mm -hmm. um but for the most part um you know once you start getting into a lot of them like you'll notice that okay, you know, these two OESK, they're two different barrels. They, yes, they taste different, but at the same time, like they have very similar characteristics. So, okay. so more so than just, just how bourbon, all bourbons taste like vanilla and oak and. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean like, they, you know, they kind of all have that. Oh, caramel, vanilla, oak. Right. Like. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, so people are asking now that that three or 400, and I'm going to keep harping on this because I'm going to say it until it becomes so real to you. Oh, that, I'm glad it's not on my channel. <laughs> <laughs> now your wife is aware of how many you have, correct? Because I don't want to. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, she's, she's well aware. Yeah, no, I, I know that she's, she does the channel along with you, um, you know, doing the intros and whatnot. So, um, which is awesome, by the way. So I, I will actually say that my, uh, my wife, I got her one of these t-shirts recently because she, mm -hmm. I, I get these for people that I know just in general. And I'll get into this in a little bit of a uh, few minutes too, but I bought several people this shirt. And at one day she was just like, how come you ever bought me a shirt? I was like, well, cause I, you hear about this whiskey channel so much that I didn't even want to like say anything more than I have to about it to you. I don't know if you've run into the same problem. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Actually, um, when she was talking to someone the other day, she's like, I don't think I've ever watched a single one of our episodes ever. <laughs> <laughs> like she's been almost all of them and she just doesn't like, she I do the editing and that's, that's the end of it. Some people are like that. Like from what I understand, uh, Bart from scotch to stummies is the same way. Like he doesn't go back oh, and yeah. rewatch re the videos. It's just, that's interesting <laughs> to me. I, um, I'd say I'm about, I'm about three quarters of them after I'm done editing or whatever. Like sometimes I'll sit on the couch and I'll, I'll rewatch just to make sure everything looks good on you know right. TV or whatever. Um, but in general, like I, I watch most of my stuff. <laughs> so that's kind of funny. Yeah. But well, especially, you know, when you do the editing, you know, you have to do it over right. and over and over and again. And then by the time, like, you're like, all right, now I have to sit down and watch this whole thing. And, mm -hmm. 
then you're like, well, you know, it's. <laughs> yeah. And not so, only that, but like if you're if you're editing the video and the audio, then not right. only are you watching the video and the audio a million times, you're also just hearing yourself. So it's like, oh, but <laughs> all, right. all right. So so getting back into it. So I, I bought her one of these shirts. So she was wearing it tonight, actually. And um, we just happened to go out to dinner tonight for the first time in like six or seven months because young kids. And, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I got to. I didn't, I didn't know she was wearing it. So then while we we're sitting at dinner, she, she had like a, you know, like a sweater on over the top. And she right. shows me and like, she was like, oh, I was going to keep this a secret and show it to you later. And uh, I was just like, oh, my God. Like, just, <laughs> I never loved you so much. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Love it. Um, so pe people are asking, uh, are all of those bottles bourbon or are they, or is there any scotch in there as well? Um, I think there's two or three bottles of scotch, um, <laughs> probably percentage. three or four bottles of Irish whiskey. So I'm looking over, um, and like two bottles of Japanese whiskey. Okay. Which I mean, it's, all, it's all bourbon and rye. What, uh, what Japanese whiskeys do you have? Just out of curiosity. Uh, Nika straight from the barrel. That's a good one. Or Nika from the barrel. Sorry. Yep. Um, and I think Nika coffee grain. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So, they're actually both really solid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, and that's kind of why I got them. It's one of those things. Everyone's like, "Oh, this is so good. This is so good." So I'm like, "All right, I'll I'll bite." You know? Yeah, totally. And and neither one is terribly expensive either. So it's it's kind of a nice it's a nice buy, especially when it comes to Japanese right. whiskey. They're like half the price of the cheapest bottle you can normally find. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So yeah, I wasn't upset about it. They're good. <laughs> um, so just uh, to kind of point out a few people. So we got most most of the regulars in here, uh, including Bourbon Sane, who was on the channel last week. Um, we got DJ Bacon in here, <laughs> uh, Matt from Whiskey Crusaders. So Matt, Matt from Whiskey Crusaders recently just started a channel as well. Um, he's been planning it for a little bit, but he just put out his first video the other day. So, nice. um, Christine's in here. I, I imagine that you probably recognize most of these names as well. I see you in the chat. Oh, yeah. uh, Hook yep. shots in here as well. He, he recently, he was the one that did those t-shirt designs that I, I put out the other day. Um, which by the way, I've been selling fantastic, which I'm psyched about. I'm actually, uh, I haven't even ordered myself one yet, but I was uh, looking at the blue one. I don't know if you saw those designs pop up on your feed the other day with the, the Glen Karen glass in the middle, but. Uh, I think so. Yeah. I think yeah. I did actually. So you gotta um, give me, speaking of t-shirts, you got to get me one of those whiskey dip shirts. <laughs> I can wear it on my channel. Consider it done. So, I'll represent. <laughs> yeah. We'll talk about it after for sure. Um, so do you want to get into some whiskey here? Yeah. Yeah. yeah you I mean, what, me, uh, nine uh, minutes. Right That's like a record. <laughs> <laughs> so for those of you that don't know tonight we are doing old ezra 7 which is a barrel strength bourbon i have not opened my bottle yet um figured i would save it for this momentous event um but to that end i'm gonna let you teach me a little something about this whiskey if you don't mind if you remember anything if, if not we'll just go in blind ha -ha. hey hey ha -ha -ha. <laughs> i see what you did there <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! So, so what do you what do you remember about this whiskey? Because I know you did a review on it back in what November? Yeah, uh, something like that. Yeah, a few mm -hmm. months ago, uh, end of the year. Mm -hmm. um, I probably haven't actually had this for over a month or so, but um, okay. I mean, it's I get like dark fruit. Yeah, definitely some oak in there. It. Uh, um, I mean, right <clears throat> right off the bat, it smells like a cast strength bourbon <laughs> without, right. without any of the burn, but you know, like that, just like you said, the Oak is to me, it's pretty prominent. Um, frankly, it kind of smells a little bit like bookers. <laughs> it does actually. Yeah. It's yeah. almost like, um, I don't want to say nutty, but like, um, mm -hmm. I don't know, almost like a fig I, type. I would, I would go hazelnut on that a little bit. Yeah. I could definitely see that. Yeah. Maybe a little almond, but cool. Well, cheers to you. May cheers, your uh, channel have much success. I know that, uh, well, we'll talk about that in a minute, but cheers to you. Thank you. You too. <laughs> and to all of you in the chat. Cheers. Mm. That is actually very different than what I was expecting. The um, the finish on that actually gets sweeter as the finish progresses <clears throat> for me. Um, yeah. Yeah, it kind of does. Yeah. The initial hit, I, I'm going to have to try that again in a sec, but I was just kind of riding that whole little ro roller coaster there. It changed dramatically. Maybe it's the first sip of the night too, but it uh, changed dramatically from the start to the finish. That's always nice. It is. It's it's kind of a does one of these numbers. You know what I mean? It's. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> hmm. I don't want to say it. I like it changes as much as like it evolves. You know, it's a very gradual, nice change. It's not like it's a 
you know, oh, yeah. there's a sweetness, and then you're like, oh, there's spice, and like it's yeah. a very. No, that's a good point. The um, for, so like for me, like I said, the the finish ended up kind of sweet, but as it, you know, after I swallowed for for a sec, you get that that distinctive, you know, kind of like rye burn, not burn, but you know what I'm talking about, the, the heat. Oh yeah, um, yeah. A little bit on your tongue, but uh, from the cast strength as well, which I'm totally gonna add a little <clears throat> few drops of water to this at, at some point soon. Um, but uh, even the beginning for me just smacks of like a butterscotch or, uh, or caramel. Oh yeah, um, there's a lot of caramel in there. Yeah. Definitely a lot. This is a good one. I'm very excited. <laughs> It's funny to me, and as I'm sure you you get this too. I mean, having that many that many unopened bottles at some point, you open them. I'm sure you've had that that immediate regret where you're like, "Man, I could have been drinking this for months." <laughs> <laughs> there definitely is. <laughs> there is a lot of that. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> honestly, like that's one of the reasons why when I bring something home, like I'll be super excited about it, and then like I have a hard time opening it because there's just so. Like there's so many open bottles and I'm like, I, I don't even have somewhere to put it. Like <laughs> that's awesome. I, I, I can, totally, I can totally relate to that. It's uh, I have this thing of like, so sorry, a little backstory. Yeah, um, yeah. A couple years ago, I got a Pappy 20 and, or actually, sorry, a long time ago, I got one <laughs> super excited about it. And I just let it sit and sit and sit until, I mean, in the end it had, you know, about yay much in the bottom of it you know what okay. i mean and it sat that way for a couple of years mm. and by the time i finally went back to it like it wasn't even good anymore oh man so, it really it, i know the bottom of the the bottom of the bottle leaving it sit too long can really have a, a major effect but i'm so a little surprised point, like i try and i'll try and drink it and some and then by the time it gets down to a third it's like mm -hmm. okay i need to finish this mm -hmm. you know what i mean like <laughs> I know it's it's hard work. I mean, it's we really are doing the the you know a very tough job here. It's <laughs> taking a hit for the team. <laughs> yeah. I wake up every day. I face that that daily grind of knowing I'm going to have to drink bourbon before the end of the night. Or <laughs> <laughs> so I saw that you started your channel. What was it around April last year? Uh, March, April. April. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty awesome. What was your uh, what was your first video that you did? Ooh, I think it was uh, Four Roses or Stag Junior. Um, wow, heavy hitters was, right off the bat. <laughs> I think it was something like that. Well, I mean, I I don't have any control over it, so you know she picks the bottles. Oh, that's a good um, point. Yeah, yeah. So you you've had this format ever since the very beginning. Right, yeah. right. That was kind of the whole the whole thing to begin with was you know doing it blind and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a like a spreadsheet of stuff that people request. Mm -hmm. And then she'll usually try and go off that for most of the part. Um, Cause she's not a big whiskey person. So she doesn't know, you know, like what's going on in, online in the community and what's new and all that kind of stuff and the hype and whatever else. So Makes she sense. just kind of has to follow what, you know, what people are requesting and hope for, you know, hope it's what people want to see. So <laughs> I, I think that one, one thing that I wanted to kind of point out was the fact that doing your channel um, as like a full channel terrifies me. <laughs> <laughs> I am terrible at blind tastings. I um I find that I often will say that that the week that I'm doing whatever whiskey review I'm doing, I know everything there is to know about that whiskey, and then right. I forget it all. And uh, so the the idea of going and having like you know three or four different whiskeys or five, um, I saw your your uh, little holder there, which is pretty cool. Um, do, you, do you have that within uh, reach by any chance? The, um, I can in just a sec. Yeah. Um, so anyway, just, just the idea of doing blind tastings and actually having to, to get some portion of it correct is something I would be very, very bad at. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely not easy. Yeah. Um, it's, it's one of those, like, there's been a few times where we're like, eh, I wouldn't pay like 15, $20 for this. And mm. then you pull out the bottle and you're like, Oh, oops. <laughs> <laughs> People really like that one, but a pair, you know, it's got like the hype around it. Yeah. Um, but, or, you know, you're like, man, this is so good and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I'd pay, you know, 80 to a hundred dollars for this and you pull it out and it's like wild turkey one oh one, and you're like, right. yeah. oh, all yeah. right. <laughs> Be frank. Wild turkey one oh one. Uh, until I finished that bottle, it continued to impress me. It was always, it's, it's definitely one of those that, that I tend to keep around. Um, 
Right. And it's, yeah. I think like, it's kind of got the stigma behind it of like mm -hmm. when you were in college or whatever, like that was the punishment. Oh, it's 101 proof. And right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's got that, that kind of stigma. So yeah. here's the, is this what you're talking about? Yes. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, I, I know it was just a, a typical one for, it must've been the way it was sitting on the couch. For some reason, I thought it had a curve to it. It does. Uh, well, it's a barrel oh, it save. So oh, it does it, have, yeah, it does it have a curve. curve. Okay, cool. Maybe it just wasn't coming out. By the way, hi, Scott. How you doing? I just didn't want to ignore you there. So Scott <laughs> from Scotch Chest Dummies is in here. Hey, Scotty. Oh. Um, all right, let's uh, let's let's just take a quick sec. I, I, if you see anybody in the chat that you recognize, feel free to shout them out. So okay. go Habs, I see you there, as well as... Uh, so I always call uh, Lark. Um, he tried to tell me how to pronounce it properly. He's from um, Finland, I want to say. And uh, he told me I could call him Lark, so I'm going to call him Lark. But it's kind of <laughs> like he didn't really want me to call him Lark, but I don't care if I call him Lark. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Not Lark. everybody gets their way. <laughs> What's up, Scott? Yeah. Bourbon Sane? What's up, buddy? He's another one that just started his own channel. Oh, yeah. Bourbon Sane's great. He was on the, the channel last week. He was, um, yeah. yep, he was, he was fun. We drank a lot of bookers together. <laughs> that, uh, that episode got away from us real quick. <laughs> Whiskey Throttle? Mm -hmm. um, I saw uh, Jason from Mash and Drum in here earlier. Oh uh, yeah, yep. So. Steve A, he's here. He's a he's a very frequent um, commenter in my uh, yep. Discord as well. He's actually, if I remember, uh, no, it's Russ. This is this other guy, Russ, who uh, he's out at the the um, where the whiskey vault is filmed. Um, it's gotcha. a, their their crowded barrel distillery. Um, yeah. <laughs> you you got it, Steve. <laughs> oh, go Habs! It's right here, buddy. Of course, I've got it. <laughs> The glove, the glove of power. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Go have some, I swear, if, if he didn't show up to the stream, I wouldn't even need this thing. But, you know. I the like first time I saw the power glove, I was like, yes, I remember that. That is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was he was the one that originally suggested, I, or just randomly brought it up. I don't even remember. I always forget what the context was of the original request, but um, he was just kind of like, hey, did you ever have the power glove? I was like, Hang on one sec. And I ran downstairs and grabbed it. Grabbed it. <laughs> That's awesome. <clears throat> so this is a, a very good bourbon. I'm um I'm actually kind of excited to review this one now. I got this from a, a viewer who sent it to me right around the time that you did your review on it, which, okay. um, you know, according to your review, which I, I know nothing about this whiskey. I haven't done any research on it whatsoever yet. Um, but according to your, your video, like they had just released it when you did your video on it. So maybe I should have jumped on it a little sooner, but oh well. <laughs> so this is kind of, yeah, I mean, ever since Fred Minnick said that he rarely liked it, it's been hard to get. Yeah, makes um, sense. But the one thing I've, th I, like, I've thought about with this whiskey is, so it's seven years old, it's barrel proof, mm -hmm. and they sell it for 35 bucks a bottle. <laughs> I mean, yeah, this is uh, how, how much does whiskey really cost to make? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> I know, it, it's mostly water. I mean, <laughs> so it's 58.5% for anybody wondering at home, which is 117 proof. Um, yep. My wife, uh, no, my wife did not get me the roses behind me. <laughs> so I, uh, yeah, obviously I got those for her. I got some tulips for, for my girls. So, awesome. um, th those didn't make it into the, but we do have heart shaped placemats because you know, that's, hey -o. so <laughs> you're a good man. Good man. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, what was I saying? So, oh yeah. So, so you said this is a, a Heaven Hill thing, or or no? Um, I didn't say. No, I, that's right. I, I'm trying to think. But I watched your review like about an hour before the stream started, um, gotcha. just to try to pick up a little something. I figured, hey, you know what? If I'm going to learn something, I might as well learn it from you. So yeah, from uh, uh, Luxco. Luxco, that's right. And yeah. you said was this one sourced? I know that they sourced some of their stuff. Uh, I'm pretty sure, uh, along with like Rebel Yell, um, David Nicholson, Blood Oath, um, those are all Luxco brand. I think Yellowstone mm -hmm. is in there too. Um, so, and if I remember right, they're an NDP, so it would be it would be sourced. Okay. Uh, but a lot of people said that they're pretty sure that it came from Heaven Hill is mm -hmm. where they sourced it from. That makes sense. I could have sworn I had heard you say something about <clears throat> else. So sense. it could be like a like a seven year, you know, Elijah Craig barrel proof or something. Who knows? Yeah. It wouldn't surprise me. I mean, this is this is one of the better one of the better bourbons I've had as far as cast strength goes in recent memory. And I, I mean, it's I like Blanton's more than this. Just bringing that out there because that's what I chose to drink last night. Yep. Uh, but I, I mean, this is this is really good, especially for uh, 
something you don't hear a whole lot about. At least I, I don't. Anyway, I don't hear a whole lot of people talking about old Ezra Seven. But oh. no, I mean, well, there was the one hundred and one for a long time, and I don't think that got much love from people. Mm -hmm. um, personally, I wasn't a huge fan of it. I just got like a weird astringent flavor on it. Right. Um, but that could totally be a personal thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, the barrel proof came out and it was one of those things like everyone was super excited about it. And then it came out and there was a bunch of hype about it. And now you can't get it. And as far as I know, like they don't know when the next, mm -hmm. um, it's going to be like a once or twice a year kind of thing. So, I mean, when, you know, when it drops, it drops, but I mean, it's, I don't know. I think, I guess what I'm saying is there's not a whole lot of talk about it because like it's a new product and it's sold out so quick that there's not, you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, no, no, I get it. It's, it's, it's just making any sense at all. Yeah. Like it, it'll, it'll disappear off the shelves as soon as it, it lands. So like right. people that know about it, will grab it and other people don't get to experience it. So it hasn't made mainstream yet. Right. But at the same time, it's not like, um, you know, Elijah Craig barrel proof or George C. Right. Stagg or something that's been around for, you know, 10, 15 years and everyone mm -hmm. knows about it, but at the same time, like, you know, it's still hard to get. So it's, New yeah. and hard to get, but makes sense. Not only that, but if you're if you're sourcing it, there's a very good chance that you're not getting a ton of it because you probably. I mean, you you know this, I'm sure, and probably a lot of people in the chat. But typically, when people source stuff from MGP or uh, wherever, they are aging their own stuff on the side, but they need a way to make money until that happens. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, I always love to see. I actually have the the complete opposite of opinion of some people when it comes to source whiskey. As long as people are honest about it, I, I have zero problem with it because I I like the idea of a distillery being able to put out something to be able to age what they truly want to make. And it's it's four or five years, you know, if you're putting out <clears throat> some a four or five year age whiskey, bourbon is um it's a long time to wait without a profit, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. You, like from a business standpoint, like unless yeah. you're just super rich, you don't have much choice. I exactly. mean, you know, some of them are making, you know, vodka and gin and whatever else until they can, you know, get their own products out there. Moonshine is usually a big one. Um, yeah. Well, but yeah, it. I mean, like you said, I have no problem with people sourcing stuff. I mean, MGP makes some fantastic stuff. Mm. They really do. I mean, it's. Yeah. Which thank goodness. I mean, <laughs> if, <laughs> if they didn't and like the whole point was, Hey, you don't know if the stuff you're about to drink that looks brand new is MGP. And if it is, it's going to be terrible or something, you know, like it's not so much of a gamble. It's almost like if you find a whiskey, you know, nothing about it, it happens to be MGP. There's a very good chance it tastes delicious, you know? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Um, you know, the bell mead, the, um, mm -hmm. smooth ambler, old scout, the, you know, um, not our, the brothers one, not our bourbon, um, mm. Not sure. Anyway, like it's, it, they're all like highly sought after, you know, eight, 10, 12 year stuff and MGP. And I mean, they're, they're really good, you mm -hmm. know, solid bourbons. It's yeah. So it looks like we have a, a bit of an influx of people. I think that, um, Eric Waits, uh, stream went a little long, which totally fine. Not a big deal. Um, he's a good guy. So for anybody who's just joining us now, uh, long story short, we are drinking Old Ezra 7 uh, Barrel Strength, which is a 58.5 ABV. Um, we are hanging out. I'm talking to, to uh, Bourbon Blind here and uh, talking about his channel. And he's got 400 bottles of unopened whiskey. And <laughs> <laughs> oh, I appreciate that. Um, I do want to give a shout out to uh, Richie Z and Chad Hawley. Um, Somehow Richie Z, I don't know if he's just doesn't have anything better to do, but he seems to be in every single live stream that have to do with whiskey. Have you noticed that? He totally does. And Which, the, Richie, I mean, cheers to you, man. That's, yeah, that's right? awesome. I'm actually, I'm with you. I always say hi to Richie, but I don't think I've really ever addressed him on a, on a stream. So <laughs> cheers to you. So speaking of which, um, uh, actually, never mind. I take that back. Total secret. So, <laughs> um, I'm going to pour a little bit more of this. This is really good. And then this time I'm going to add a little bit of water to it actually. Cause I'm okay. curious while, while my palate's not fried from a cast strength whiskey, I want to try to no uh, nose and taste this a little bit more. See if anything pops out with the water. So, um, let's see what else we got going on in the chat. So I did see that somebody was telling me that, uh, you know, my favorite whiskey was Jack Daniels honey, which, 
I, I guess I take a little offense too. <laughs> but I mean, I is that really whiskey or? It's such an egregious claim that I don't think anybody would ever believe it. <laughs> like, I mean, I know like legally speaking it's whiskey, but is it? I mean, <laughs> I actually, I, I don't know if it is. I've actually never, I've never done that. Actually, no, I don't. I wouldn't think so because it's like add something to it. it where, where it hits a, a gray line for me um, is, I know you can't call it bourbon. But right. can you still yep. call it whiskey? And I don't think so. Pretty sure you can't, but I'm I'm not confident in that. But I think if I remember right, it's 70 proof, which would make it like a liqueur so, or yeah. something to that effect. Um yeah. I'm sure yeah. someone it's in the panel proof, say, it's definitely not whiskey. Say it, so. but um so what yeah. do you think of it with the water? So it it definitely um <clears throat> I almost wanna, you know what? Actually, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pour. A little bit and kind of do a nosing nosing across the board here um or you know one to the other i figured that this is a little bit more up your alley um i always i always make it a point to say that i don't i don't typically do nosing and tastings on my live streams because it's not usually the the format that i prefer to to do it right. in. I, I tend to I, I find i can't concentrate and i don't necessarily <laughs> want to just sit there in silence while i'm figuring it out oh but yeah for for you know just keeping with the theme of your channel i'm, I'm gonna Hey, you show. you do you man this is your show i'm just i'm just here to uh <laughs> make a good friend and drink some whiskey yeah well i i'm happy to have you on the channel for sure it's i i'm actually really loving having all these different people on on the the channel kind of doing live streams together because it's fun to meet kind of the the next wave of people coming coming up so hey eric thank you very much um it's fun to see more people starting channels and and it's interesting to see how many of them only do like one or two episodes before they realize how much work it is? <laughs> it is so much work. Like, <laughs> and not to say that all the other channels aren't work, because I know everything yeah. that goes into it. But like for us, we have three people that that all have to be there. I mean, obviously my wife right. I live with, but um, you know, Jason and Jay both live an hour to an hour and a half away. Wow, that's far. Yeah. Um. So they'll come down and then. Um, like last week we were supposed to do a couple episodes and filming. Jay was going to come down and my wife was sick. So, um, we had to call it off and, um, you know, I mean, like, you know, like you get out the lights and the mic and oh the camera yeah. set up. And I mean, it's, there's a lot of stuff. And then after that, like you have to do the editing and, oh and not to mention the kid factor. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> that's not his voice at all <laughs> No. <laughs> for, for whatever. For whatever reason, I was making noise so the the hangout was focused on me, and then I heard her voice, and it wasn't yours, and I got real confused. Him. <laughs> like, I haven't drank that much yet, so <laughs> I'm pretty sure your voice changed. Right? <laughs> yes, yeah, so, I mean, we're we're too, like, we have two small you. kids, so I mean, it's you know, it's not easy. Yeah. <laughs> well, since you're on, would you like to introduce yourself? I know how uh, <laughs> you're you're on for a few seconds in every episode, but exactly. Hi, I'm Erin. <laughs> Most y'all, well, if you follow our show, I do introductions. Mm -hmm. so. And she does a fantastic job at it. <laughs> I never, I finally watched an episode of our show, like not even a month ago. And that's really sad to even say. I never <laughs> realized that I was putting stuff in front of my face. Oh, yeah. It's hard to, it's hard to not do it's that. Hard, yeah. Like who knew? Yeah. Anywho. Right. <laughs> what are you you're drinking old Ezra as well? I am. Yeah, we're drinking it okay. together. I have one here without any water and one here with water. And the 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 nose on it's dramatically different. But but since you showed up, are you you're drinking old Ezra with us? Yeah, she stole my bottle. And took it away. <laughs> Fantastic. Good. Did you know that your husband has 400 unopened bottles of whiskey? <laughs> uh only. <laughs> well, no, that that's just unopened. So no, I think we have only 400. Uh, I don't. I try no, not to count. No, seriously. Yeah. We have bourbon bottles coming out of every single closet. <laughs> um, it's gotten to the point where it's taken over my laundry room. It's taken over our liquor cabinet. It's taken over his office at work. It's taken over <laughs> his second office at work. Um, <laughs> like I'm only surprised it's only four hundred. <laughs> if the house okay. ever catches on fire, I'm going to tell the fire department. Oh my God. It's going up in like well, a quarter. If the kids Just are stay the, away. If the kids are in the house, oh no, please go in. You know, it's not going to blow up. But if <clears> the kids gonna... are out of the house, I'm going to be like, stand back and watch this thing explode because um, it, it's going to go down in a, like a fit of glory. 
<laughs> it's going to rival that uh, great Chicago fire with the cow and the, the barn and all that. <laughs> <laughs> the Heaven Hill fire of the 97. Yes. Oh, that, that's way better. However, way better. if there's ever a fall of society, we will be opening our own bar. Oh, yeah. No, you'll like when, when, when alcohol is the, is the kind of trade and you know, we're rich. You'll be, you'll be rich. So, <laughs> thank you, Dustin, very much. I appreciate it. Um, <laughs> so, uh, all right. So you need to get another Glen Karen glass because now there's three of us drinking. I don't know how long she's hanging out, but you're welcome to stay the whole as long as you'd like. This is, I've got kids. <laughs> Yeah, me too. I'm a, no, I'm sorry. I have a three, <laughs> three-year-old and four-year-old. They're both asleep, thankfully. My wife uh, put them to bed tonight, so ours are three and seven, and definitely not asleep. No. It's only eight thirty <laughs> here. So, and my daughter at eleven thirty is going to be the one walking out, going, "Hey, she crawls on the floor." Yeah. Episodes every once in a while, you'll hear a bump or a bang, and they watch, <laughs> and like they'll both kind of look down or to the back and then they keep on going. It's because my daughter's crawling on the floor and then she'll crawl underneath the camera to like open the fridge and then she'll <laughs> crawl back out and turn and crawl. I mean, like, you got it. <laughs> Usually like, by that point, like, we just stop right? talking and just edit it out. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a couple times where, uh, one of my daughters will have a, a nightmare or something and they're, they're kind of like over here and then up the stairs and whatever. And, um, so I'll just like hear crying and I'm like, I, I I'll be right back. <laughs> you know, right. live you stream, like, oh, right. Hear me in the side. It's okay. It's okay. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, especially on a live stream, like you can't edit that out. No, so. totally. <laughs> yeah. Like There's so, uh, everyone in the group kind of like talk amongst yourselves, and I'll be back in five. <laughs> <laughs> Topic of conversation. <laughs> talk amongst. Is yourself. Jack Daniels bourbon? Go. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So so what uh what state are you guys in? We're in Tennessee. We're actually like 15 minutes from Jack Daniels. Okay. All so. right. What is, um, my experience has been people from Tennessee generally tend to love that Jack Daniels is there. Uh, do you have any opinion? Negative? Not really. I mean, it's kind of a, I don't even want to say it was like, it's a huge employer because it's really not. Mm. Um, I mean, I, you know, they have a few hundred employees or something, but I mean, it's not like some of the big, um, uh, factories and that kind of stuff um i will say people around here do love their jack daniels yeah you know like i live in a small town in the small county there's a lot of small towns around here mm -hmm. uh, and the bar in town like i'm pretty sure their top shelf stuff is like jack daniels or um not right. yeah patron but but the um, bar may close at 10 30. 10 30. Yeah. If it's Ooh. not busy, they'll just shut down and go home. Yeah. That's, well, <laughs> I, I guess that it makes a little bit of sense, but that's, that's a pretty early time. I meant I, yeah. um, back some 35 now and back when I was 20, 20 or I, I guess I was 21. Um, a friend of mine got married and he was from Kentucky. So he got married in Kentucky and, uh, Bowling Green. And he, um, he made it a point to tell us that it was dry County and that his wedding reception would have no alcohol. I have to say it was the fastest wedding reception I've ever been to. <laughs> it was, no one sticking around. <laughs> oh man, it, it never it never occurred to me how much alcohol makes a wedding reception. And uh, <laughs> you know, the the longer everybody's hanging out, people are dancing and they're they're just drunk off their ass, and it's way more fun. Um, but <laughs> it was like, well, everybody ate, and I guess we'll go home now. <laughs> so so this is what we call social lubricant. Mm. <laughs> What is that? What? what? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the same bottle. Weird. Yeah. Right. Oh man. So, <laughs> um, so we actually just started a uh, a small local uh, bourbon society. Okay. Um, actually, the store that I always go to came to me, and they were like, "Hey, we have this space that you can use um, next door here as like an event space. Do you want to start a bourbon society and all this kind of stuff?" And I was like, "Sure. Why not?" Right. Yeah. Um, so the first, the first event was last month and everyone was kind of, you know, they showed up and real timid and all this kind of stuff. And I brought, mm -hmm. I don't know, 12 or 15 different bottles, um, you know, just different stuff that we can taste, kind of start with the low proof stuff and work our way through, you know, five or seven, eight bottles, whatever. Um, and a lot of people had never really drank whiskey before or whatever. And some people were, you know, more like us, more versed in it. Yeah. And, um, so everyone was real timid and kind of keeping to themselves. And by like the fourth or fifth bottle, everyone was, you know, <laughs> talking and having a great time and yelling across the room. And 
<laughs> it's it's always incredible to me. Like I get it. I mean, I live it firsthand. I understand why it is, but it's it's always funny to me how how much it brings out what a person truly kind of almost like is inside their soul. You know what I mean? Like right. Like if you want to be outgoing, but you just can't because you're just so introverted and you have a few a couple of these. All of a sudden, you're you're like Mr. Charisma, you know. You're everyone's best friend. Man. Yeah, and it's funny. One one thing that I love about about doing the YouTube channel, I don't know if you can relate to this. I would guess you probably can, especially uh, you said you travel a lot. Um, at least in business, like I'm way way more personable and like charismatic and, <laughs> and all of the stuff since I started the YouTube channel. And I think oh, a, yeah. a big portion of it is just you force yourself to be entertaining to some degree. And, and, you know, even now just, just talking at a camera, even though you're there obviously, I'm staring <laughs> right. at the camera with my microwave behind it and I have to, you know, you have to keep going and it's, it's, it's interesting. It is. Um, I mean, it's, I've, I've seen the same kind of thing. I mean, naturally I am not a, I can talk to anyone, mm -hmm. but in like a social setting, I'm usually the guy at the table that is quiet and, you know, just kind of listening to see what's going on, what everyone's talking about, mm -hmm. but I'm much more quiet and reserved where, you know, like you said, like on camera, like you have to be outgoing and, you know, now, yeah. like I said, I'm, I'll talk to just about anyone. I'm not scared to talk to people, but if there's, you know, five or eight people around, I'm usually the more quiet one and, mm -hmm. you know, see, I like to think of that as, as just being, uh, Oh, what's the shoot? I had the word. <laughs> Never mind. I, I'm totally, totally lost it. There's, there's a fancy word for that. Like her, on the other hand, she's very extroverted. She'll, she'll go yeah. out and talk to you. <laughs> well, just knowing that, that your wife is willing to even come on camera. My, uh, <laughs> like even, even before you and I had our, our little like 10, 15 minutes prior to the stream, my wife, um, you know, as I was, I was like, okay, I'm about to hit start. Like, and she's like, oh my God, you run away. You know, the camera's about to go on. Yeah. She's, she's happy being uh, Miss Dick or Mrs. Dick, but she doesn't want to be on camera. So, so yeah, I definitely, um, yeah, I'm, it's, I don't know. I'm, like you said, you have to know how to talk to people and stuff in general, but mm -hmm. yeah, so. Yeah. So I have a, a question for people in the audience here. So, um, what let's let's even just throw this out just since we're talking bourbon what is everybody in the chats current doesn't have to be like you know world changer what is, what is your current favorite bourbon what would you go grab out of your out of your liquor cabinet right now if you had to drink a bourbon or what are you drinking along with us let's uh let's just see what how ver um, diverse the the audience is here i love it um, so pe people are asking me how it was with the water i would say the taste didn't change much the nose did um which I find it's about 50 50 among among bourbons for myself, whether it's usually the, the nose almost always changes, but, but the taste doesn't always change being as this is cask strength. I think I'd probably have to add a lot more water than the three drops I usually do uh, to make a, a big effect. Um, I noticed that the, the caramel flavor, or sorry, the caramel nose kind of, um, what'd you call it? Like it got much more mild over mm. uh, after even just a few drops. So all right. Oh, people are drinking Blanton's. We got Bunahaben 18. <laughs> um, old Ezra 101. Yep. Seven year and just killed the bottle. Oh, good for you, DJ Bacon. <laughs> now you have room for another one. Boone County 18, uh, 12 year. That's another one of the MGP really good ones. Mm -hmm. Surprisingly, a few people have old Ezra, which I, I think that's very interesting. Hmm. Well, I mean, I think when they put it out there, their kind of intention was for it to stay on the shelf. You know what I mean? And yeah. have it be readily available, not so much of like a, a limited thing. Um, I don't know if they just didn't anticipate the, uh, the demand for it. Mm -hmm. So I think whiskey throttle was trying to say bookers or Pike's 20 year old orphan <laughs> barrel. Um, which, uh, which bookers whiskey throttle. I have not had the Pike's 20 year old orphan barrel. I don't know anything about it, but Based off what I know about Booker's, I could tell you if it's a which one you might want to choose. So since you're, <laughs> let me ask you this, Mister Booker's man. Okay. Um, I've never been able to get a straight answer from anywhere. Sure. So I'm sure you're aware they have like the Booker's website, right? I don't know if it's yes. Fan Run or whatever with all the different releases and stuff. Yep. Not all the releases are on there. Sure aren't. <laughs> so like, is um, that? 
Yeah. So I, I've actually emailed them more than a few times um, just to try to be like, because the, the main thing was, and this is kind of peeling back the curtain a little bit. So I have a contact now at Jim. Uh, yeah, Jim Beam. Sorry, I'm getting everything confused. Um, I have a contact over there that now sends me bottles of Booker's, which is fantastic because they're like 80 bucks a pop and it's, it saves a lot. Um, anyway, so they send along, they call them, um, shoot, what are they called? Uh, they're like these glossy sheets, essentially, that that essentially tell you everything about it. They send like a, a PDF and like thing. a hard copy. Um, Slicks, I think is what they're called. Okay. Yeah. And um, it has this little, uh, it's like a, a version of, I pulled the O3, by the way, today. Um, okay. Oh, I totally forgot. People have super chatted. I, I owe them a, a drink of this. So anyway, the, this little label here, they have like a really high res PDF version of it that I usually put on my PD, uh, my thumbnails. And that website was where I was usually getting them until I made this contact. Um, so it was killing me when they didn't update it because then I didn't have the image for my thumbnail. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it, it, there were a couple of times where I, I would actually like take a picture of a bottle and it just never came out well. Anyway, so, um, yeah, I emailed them a whole bunch of times and they finally updated it probably around the end of last year. And uh, to my knowledge, I think it's pretty close to accurate. It might not have all of the 2018s on there, but it's it's pretty close. Like um, I noticed I have one from 2016. It's called No Hard Times. Yeah. Um, and I've never really been able to find anything about it online or anything. Um, but I mean, obviously it's a Booker's bottle because I have it. Got it from the store. But. Yeah. And they didn't have the 2016s on there? Um, they had some of the 2016s, but not that one. Hmm. I'm, uh... So I didn't know what, you know. I, I was going to bring it up, but I don't have it uh, quite queued up. I forgot I'm not on OBS. I was going to bring it up for everybody here. Um, I don't know about you, but did, do you ever, I know you said that you do streams like very, very seldomly for, for Patreon. Um, right. Have you ever done like a, an actual stream just on your channel? Um, I've done a couple live streams and then I have um, a couple of people I've had on uh, DJ from uh, rare bird one Oh one. Bryant from Bryant on bourbon on Instagram. Uh, he knows, He's, he doesn't have a channel or anything. He just has an Instagram account, but he's kind of always in the know of, you know, what's going on and kind of behind the scenes type stuff. And wealth of information. Yeah. Yeah. Huge wealth of information. So. Cool guys. Right. Um, so super important. Uh, the chat is asking you to type something in the chat. That way they can uh, get your name and start tagging you on, on questions and stuff. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't have whiskey. I don't have whiskey. <laughs> None whiskey in your house. Zero. Not a bottle. So I can I can kind of see the bottles behind you. I see a Russell's Reserve up there, and uh, let's see. I I'm gonna I'm gonna make it. So I think there's two four there's roses. A larceny, a Russell's Reserve, and two oh, um, two four roses barrel strength. So yeah. that's that's yeah. just happens to be up there. Um, yeah. We were. You should turn um, it to show like the top. Up there, oh, oh, there's there's on top of your China club. Or up there. Um, I don't know if you could see up there. We have bottles everywhere. So yeah. there's um, it's uh, kind of a like I said, those just happen to be up there. So remember when I said when they get down close to a third, I'm like, oh, that needs to be finished. Um, over the last few weeks, that's stuff that I've <laughs> finished and I just kind of like threw up there. Um, yeah. I actually have an idea for a new backdrop in a bar. Okay. And, um, uh, it's, so I'm saving all my empty bottles basically for it. Um, basically what I want to do is try and take like a tile saw and saw all of them in half okay. and then use the front half of the bottle and attach it to the wall somehow and kind of use mm -hmm. all of the bottles to make them kind of look like they're set in the wall or something. I don't know. I have no clue if it's going to work, but I was going to say, um, I've never seen them cut like the long way before I've seen them cut this way and people tend to use, it's like a, like a really, really hot, um, almost like a coil you can, you can kind of wrap it around and then you put electricity through it and it melts right through uh -huh. the ball. You can kind of snap it right off. Never seen it done the long way. Cause I think it'd have to be too, almost too like perfectly fitted. Um, but hell yeah. You know, if you, <laughs> if you can cut glass with a tile saw, um, I think you absolutely should film it. <laughs> <laughs> Because it, either it'll be cool to see or it'll go horribly wrong. It'll be cool to see. If if it works, I mean, I'm assuming there's going to be quite a few breakages along the way. But yeah, yeah. I really think like if you got, you know, like you use the water and stuff and went really slow that you could make it work. Yeah. Like I said, I have no clue. It may not work at all, but 
Yeah, I'm, it's very I'm possible to try it. Yeah, I think you should definitely give it a shot. Um, <laughs> so, uh, my power glove will cut glass. <laughs> <laughs> I just read that. <laughs> hmm. So I'm going to open up the Weller. Um, okay. I don't know if you want to join me here? Yeah, I'm in. I'm going to put the old Ezra to the side here and uh, open up some Weller. I'm going to drink it out of my wonderful – I always love showing this thing off. Oh, I Not saw that. It, yeah, this thing is fantastic, but it's um, it's actually – hold on. Uh, I'm not going to drink out of that one. I, do you ever get this? Like, Glenn Karen's just totally don't always get clean in a dishwasher. Do uh -huh. you ever – uh, and that one apparently didn't get clean, so I'm not going to pop off <laughs> the screen right now just to wash a glass. So I'll just uh, I'll rinse this one out with some water and probably get uh, it. Usually, when I wash them in the dishwasher, I try and do like I'll make a top rack of them and use just that in the dishwasher. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, I'll kind of make them uh, do them by hand. Mm -hmm. Have I ever toured any distilleries in Kentucky? Um, yeah, I've toured Buffalo Trace, Heaven Hill. Um, Jim Beam, Four Roses, Wild Turkey, uh, OCD, which is a very small craft distillery. It's like two dudes. Um, I actually have some footage. I'm going to try and put out a video of it. Um, it. It is one of the coolest distilleries I've ever seen. Which uh, one is? Sorry, I missed it. OCD. Um, OCD. They just came out with OCD number five recently. Okay. I don't know if you've seen it around. Um, they have probably a very limited production just from their so you know like the um the steel cages with the plastic 275 gallon water totes in them these for like industrial stuff and uh the only thing i can it's picture like a is like a square, cage. <laughs> it's just like for a big that. square uh tub of water basically okay. uh but anyway sure. they take those and they cut out the top of them and they oh, use yeah. that they yeah. use that for their mash tons huh and they just upgraded from a five gallon like DIY um, five gallon keg mm -hmm. that they were made into a still um, into like a 20 gallon still. So, I mean, they're totally small and they have a bunch of jars. And they let you uh, fill up a barrel and that's cool. It's it's totally out of this world, like very different than your standard. Oh, distillery very, tours. very different. So I, I love that about these small distilleries that are opening up. It's part of the reason I, I do the the small you know craft distillery stuff on my channel i i find that they're so interesting which um, i love by the way what was that i said i love it that you do oh, all the, the you. i appreciate that <laughs> i've uh i've actually got this new one uh it's, got, it's a place in new york they're they're a little bit bigger than a craft distillery but i think they're still pretty small the guy told me it's just like two people um called tommy rot tommy rotter i think okay. it's yeah. And um, they, they do. So we were talking earlier about when newer people come up, either they go MGP and then age their own stuff or the alternative, which we didn't really talk too much about, is they produce uh, poutine, vodka, gin, bourbon and maybe like an American whiskey as well. Um, almost And uh, yeah, I think I, I think I got them all. But like they do a bunch of different stuff just to make money while the other stuff ages. Um I always think that's interesting when people do that because it, it's it tells you a lot about the way that the distillery is. I almost I I prefer the young stuff from an MGP sourced versus mm -hmm. like the, the stuff that they're just barely pushing out there, maybe like a few bottles at a time from the people who are doing their own stuff because you know that they're pushing it out earlier than they probably want to. Yeah. Um, but like like for example, there's this one near me called Flaming Leprechaun, and I did uh, they do an Irish whiskey, and I I did a review of their stuff. But they do like a like a cinnamon whiskey, which actually honestly I tasted it. It wasn't bad. It's not my thing, but like it wasn't bad. It wasn't uh, overdone. They, what was that? It wasn't overdone. Exactly. It actually like most of them taste just way too much. This one was genuinely like what i think a cinnamon whiskey probably should taste like but i don't typically do flavored whiskeys but then um they do a vodka a gin and a poutine and those all taste pretty good they they gave me samples of all of them and they, they tasted fantastic but i was also just like uh, this isn't really like if i want a vodka i'm gonna go to a vodka you know like <laughs> right i don't know it, yeah like yeah or or Grey goose that's the one i was thinking of yeah <laughs> like vodka yeah, I drink yeah. bourbon. I mix vodka. You mix vodka now. So here's a question for you because I do actually like vodka. If I if I drink a secondary drink, it's either gin or vodka. 
Do you have a preferred mix of some sort of vodka drink that you could suggest? Because I've oh, citron stuff. and seven, two lemons, two limes. Say that slower. Citrus vodka. Yeah. Seven up. Mm -hmm. Two lemon wedges, two lime wedges. Wow. Okay. Do it is citrusy, but it is so smooth. And if I'm out and about, like at a bar or whatever, I start my night with that. And I Dang. usually end up with two, three, four of those. <laughs> Bloody Marys <laughs> too, but Bloody Marys, it's really hit or miss if the bartender. Yeah. Like, and they never put enough Wisher, Worcestershire. That's Worcestershire. true. How do you say that? I've never said it right. Worcestershire. Yeah. There you go. Worcestershire. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, li I live home. about I live about twenty minutes away from Worcester, Massachusetts. So <laughs> I'm uh, you know not that that's Worcestershire, but it's 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 a word that naturally flows pretty easy for me. So can't say it. Yeah, everybody always struggles with that one. I just keep telling them make it more dirty. It's not dark enough. Keep going. <laughs> keep, going. keep going. Yeah. Just keep throwing random crap in there. Put a piece of bacon in there. Put some shrimp in there. So I, I see uh, your 107 is a store pick. It is. Yeah. So I got this from a, a viewer, actually. I met up last weekend with um, somebody at a bar. Um, he uh, him, he was just happened to be in my area. And he was like, hey, I'm going to be, you know, in this, I think it was, it wouldn't mean anything, but I think it was Mansfield, Massachusetts. And um, he's like, there's a Buffalo Wild Wings there. Why don't we just meet there and have a drink and I'll give you a bottle of Weller and a couple of samples. I was like, just so happened. We were talking about kids earlier. Just so happened I had absolutely nothing to do that day. And my wife was like, yeah, no, go have fun. It'd be great. Um, so I went and met up with him. And um, I'll, I'm putting out a video tomorrow where I kind of go into the story, but you guys are all watching the live stream, so you can hear it a little early. So we we met up, and we had a had a drink together, and um, we ended up actually drinking that flaming leprechaun Irish whiskey as one of the drinks that we had, and then uh, then we had a beer because they really had shit selection there. <laughs> but um, after you know when when we were kind of done, done drinking, you know the check came, and I I told him I'm like you know I'm totally picking up the check. You brought me a bottle of whiskey, of course I'm going to pick up the check. Yeah, and then he he was like, well, no, I was going to pick up the check. And I, I was like, no, 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 I insist. And he's like, well, I insist. I was like, okay, well, let's do this. And I, I brought him one of these coins and uh, we handed it to the, the waitress and we were just like, can you flip this coin for us? And I was like, if it lands on the whiskey dick, I'll pay for it. If it lands on bookers, you can pay for it. And just so happens it landed on bookers. So not only did I get a free, free uh, bottle, I got a free, free, uh, you know, free meal. whiskey too. So that's awesome. I felt pretty good about that, that uh, whole, whole situation, but <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I finally opened this one up. It's actually one of the, I think it's actually the only one that I have that's not a store pick. Mm. Um, I have this thing like it's, I have a hard time. So when I get, like I'll open up store picks and stuff, obviously, but it's kind of like a, if this is a really good barrel, like what if I can't get another one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, so, I can see that. Um, I'm doing good whiskey shenanigans. Cheers. So I, yeah, on a side note, since you're addressing the chat, so Rob Davy, he's the guy I met up with. He's in the chat right now. Mm -hmm. um, so hey, Rob, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Bad flip. I, I, to, I totally changed my entire schedule to do that bottle that you gave me tomorrow. So that's coming up tomorrow. <laughs> um, by the way, have you poured yourself some Weller? I, I, I did. already had a couple sips, yep. but all right, all good. Right. Yeah. Oh, this is one of those ones. Like it's it's so hard to not like this. Yeah. You know what I mean? I hear you. Um, I actually went on a uh, barrel pick at um, Buffalo Trace, mm -hmm. and so the 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 Buffalo Trace they put in the barrel um, mash bill number one and two at like 125 proof, mm -hmm. whereas their weeded bourbons they put in the barrel at 115 proof. All right, hold on one sec. Um, yep. I'm sorry to interrupt your story. I uh, got a specific uh, request from a super chat here, and I feel I need to honor it because. They put up the money. Yes, you um, do. Yeah. All right. Here's to you, Dan. Oh. <laughs> I feel bad doing that with Weller, but you know, it's. I kind of feel like I need to do the same thing, just you know, in support of you. I, <laughs> I was gonna make it hold out for another super chat, but I'm I'm fine with that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's funny. I, I for those of you that that may or may not be new to the channel. I have I have several different items that typically kick off super chats or super chats kick off the items. It's one of them's the power glove, although now Go Habs just asked for it every time. So <laughs> um, then there's the bookers, which actually I still still have to drink. And then just I'm basically just kind of a 
sucker for an interesting super chat like that. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I found it really interesting. So the barrels that we were tasting through were like 116, 117 proof. Mm -hmm. um, so, when, I mean, when they water it down to 107, I mean, they're really not watering it down all that much. You know what I mean? So, yeah. I No, I mean, that. I love any anything that's over 80 proof. Um, hold on one quick sec. Uh, yeah. DH Silva, I have no idea what you're talking about. Can you elaborate in the chat? And then I'll, I'll talk about it. Um, I... I, I always hate when any whiskey is 80 proof because to me it feels like one of two things. Either it's a money grab. Um, I just noticed, I think my tripod's a little loose because now I'm, do you see that? I'm like, yeah, you're it. tilting a little bit. All right, give me, give me Your two camera's seconds. drunk. Yeah, um, <laughs> so can you still hear me? Yes, I can. All right. So uh, I think what um, DH Sliv was talking about, um, Weller, they're making 107 harder to get and 12 quote unquote easier to get. Um, but MSRP on the 107 is going to be going up to 49.99. So basically wow. $50 MSRP on the 107. Okay. So I, um, I don't think that it's unworthy of that price, but one of the things that made Weller kind of, all right, I totally yeah, right I jacked it up even more. That's yeah, all right. right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like you said, I mean, it's it's good, and I would pay $50 for it, but, I mean, if they're, you know, going to knock it up to $60, $70 after that, then, uh, I mean, you know, personally, I'm, I'm kind of out at that price. I mean, $50 is kind of my, has been my kind of limit. Now. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's much better. All right, cool. It's a little, so, little different angle, but I'll, I'll just deal with that for the rest of the stream. It's fine. You're good. Yeah. No, you're still straight. You're good. Yeah, the cameras have some. It's good. Yeah, there's a door there that nobody ever gets to see <laughs> behind the scenes, right? <laughs> um, no, I'm totally with you, especially for bourbon. It's just bourbon needs to be inexpensive if you live in America. It just should. If it's not, then it better be damn good. So, right, like for me, like like don't get me wrong. Obviously, we pay more than fifty dollars for a bottle, mm -hmm. but I really don't. Not that I don't like to, but you know what I mean. Like if it's over fifty dollars, it better be. Premium. premium. It better right. be premium stuff. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want just some, like that was my, I really like Jefferson's oceans. Right. Okay. But it's $80 and yeah. like 92 or 94 proof. And I'm like, and for like an extra 15 bucks, you can get the cask strength version, which, That's you know, really good. at that point, like, yeah, I'll just go for the cask strength, but <laughs> how much is my name? Um, so as far as the, the ocean, so based off how many bottles you have, do you have a good amount of the different voyages? Um, I have three or four of them. I think I, I have one bottle. bottle. It's voyage 13. It's you know, the only one I have. Um, I've tried it. Like it's fantastic. Or, well, fantastic. Might be overselling it a little bit. It's good. Um, right. I remember when I, when I tried the regular Jefferson's, I was pretty underwhelmed, but it felt like a pretty decent like intro to bourbon. Uh, kind of whiskey, but I didn't. Um, I I noticed a significant increase in quality when you went to the the oceans, and um, or so, yeah, Jefferson's Ocean, mm -hmm. and um, the thirteen. I haven't tried other voyages, and it was hard to think about comparing them because I'm I'm also like I don't think I want to buy another one of these. Uh, I haven't actually reviewed it yet though because I haven't opened up uh, Jefferson's for myself yet on my channel. So, There's so one. I mean, sorry for me, it's kind of like a. Um, it's really good, but I think it would be much better in like the forty to fifty dollar price range. Yeah, for the yeah. not cast strength version, you know what I mean. And mm -hmm. you really want to pay attention to the tags. Um, we've got one voyage that's absolutely amazing, and one that I'm like, eh. Yeah, I um I actually talked to Bourbon saying uh, last stream about the same thing because I we were talking about the story behind a lot of these whiskeys. Like for me personally, that was what started the channel. Is that I'm not necessarily like a history nerd or anything like that, but mm -hmm. when I started thinking about doing a channel on whiskey, I started looking into some of the history of some whiskeys. And I found that virtually every whiskey has some story, maybe not always interesting, but like some story to it. Yeah. Um, a lot of it's marketing, I'm sure, but oh, a lot yeah. of the older brands have legit stories behind them. And Voy uh, Voyage, you know, or, geez, I keep calling it Voyage. Jefferson's Ocean has one of the, better stories in my opinion that is provable yeah, i mean this stuff is clearly on a boat they they have the mm -hmm. log and they have you know evidence but 
I always thought that was interesting, especially when you read the log, you know, seeing be like, you know, there was like a huge storm this day. And like, that's something that if you felt like you really wanted to, you could probably go fact check and it's probably true. You know, I, I, I thought that was cool. I, and I do like the fact that it travels all over the place and then comes back and then they bottle it. I think that's a neat thing. It's a little bit gimmicky. gimmicky. Cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's, um, it's right. fine. You and know, I, mean, like, I, I really do get like some saltiness, like mm -hmm. from the salt air, I think on the back end of it, you know what I mean? Yeah. And you do, um, you do kind of notice that it, I mean, especially when you compare it to the regular Jefferson's, um, regular Jefferson's where you're like, okay, this might be a little bit more aged, but it's sloshing around on those barrels. It, I, I think it genuinely makes a difference, you know? I, I, I really do. Yeah. I really mm -hmm. think it does. Um, yeah. if you don't mind, Dan asked real quick, mm -hmm. um, said, what do you think of rabbit hole PX Sherry? $80 a bottle. Um, personally, I've never tried it. Um, from what I remember, it's like 90, 94 proof, 93 proof, something like that. Um, which at $80 a bottle, 93 proof, maybe, I mean, if it's easy to get, then that may be one thing I know, uh, like midwinter's night's dram is, mm -hmm. Um, I, it's one of my favorite. I really love the midwinter night stram. Um, and it's, you know, 90 bucks a bottle or so. Uh, but obviously it's a lot harder to get. So there's that fact, yeah. uh, but it is like a barrel it. proof, but I mean, that's where I would go. If you're, if you're hemming and hawing over a bottle, like reach out and see, you know, sometimes bars have it, but a lot of times like your friends will have it. That's the craziest thing. Like if you don't ask, you don't know, but like, yeah. We can't tell you how many times we've had people over and they're like, dude, I'm, I, I don't know what to do. This bottle's $90, but I keep hearing good things. I don't know. We're like, dude, let's just pour it for you. <laughs> That's where like, you know, like your local <laughs> bourbon society or something like that really comes, comes in handy because I've got to try some really, really awesome bottles um, or really rare bottles. I should say that I would mm -hmm. never get the chance to try, you know, in a normal setting, like, um, Warehouse C Tornado Survivor E H Taylor. Right. Last I checked yeah. on secondary is like two thousand dollars a bottle. And jeez. Oh, <laughs> right. Like I'm not, not buying it. There's no way. Um, <laughs> no. I mean, and we all knew it was coming. I remember oh, joking yeah. with people about like when that whole thing happened. I remember being like, they are one hundred percent going to do a special release of this bourbon survived the tornado. You know, it's like it's. <laughs> Uh, I'm waiting for the 1792 yep, 1792. version still. <laughs> we're, 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 oh, the Warehouse Collapse Edition. Um, the Warehouse Collapse Edition. I actually have a uh, store pick that was bottled on um, that day, the day that the warehouse collapsed. Wow. And so they did a big sticker on the back of it called the Wrecking Ball Edition. <laughs> and it has a guy riding a wrecking ball, um, destroying awesome. the warehouse. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like, uh, spoiler alert. Um, the warehouse, the EHT, the yep. EH Taylor warehouse sees tornado, blah blah blah. Um, <laughs> it honestly tastes like a slightly off profile EH Taylor small batch. Hmm. Like, it's good, flavor, by the way. Um, the guy that brought it, honestly, he doesn't even like it, so okay. he just brings it to all the bottle shares and just lets everyone else drink it because everyone mm -hmm. else gets a kick out of it. You know what I mean? It's not something you get regularly, but for him, it's like it it's not a big deal to him he doesn't even like it so yeah i'd say go if you have some sort of local group try and get Reach in out. with them and see, see if find. someone has it mm -hmm. makes sense um so real quick just because i i'm i we kind of have this like friday thing going on so bourbon saying i i tried oh he is live now all right that's fine we'll we'll go for a few more minutes and then and then people should absolutely feel free to hop over to bourbon saying's chat or I usually do some sort of a uh, kind of like an after show over in the Discord, awesome. which um, let me actually, I think I still have it copied. Uh, nope, sure don't. <laughs> um, anyway, if you check the description of this this video, you'll see a link to the Discord. You should go join first off because it's awesome. A lot, a lot of us talk about whiskey pretty much all day, talk about whatever else as well. It's just kind of a fun place to hang out. Um, if you happen to be like one of those whiskey tribe people and you chat in the Facebook all the time and kind of don't want, you want something a little bit more real time, Discord is a good good replacement for that. Anyway, I usually do kind of like a live um, chat thing after the fact, uh, after the live streams, and we're all hanging out there. So go join awesome. us there. 
or go join um, Bourbon Sane's live chat, uh, live stream, and um, you know, watch him. Um, anyway, so do you want to kind of give like a, a I, I hate to cut us off soon, but I, I just no, you're good. I like to try to keep these things at, at near an hour. Do you want to give everybody like a quick one more synopsis of your channel, what you do, maybe something that you're doing soon that you're excited about? Uh, something so that you should try to watch. Sure. Um, real quick, I do want to give a scout, uh, shout out to Scott at Scotch Test Dummies. Um, mm -hmm. Super awesome dude, by the way. Mm -hmm. Scott, you're amazing. Um, but he, he wrote in the chat when I was talking about the warehouse um, stuff, it's still just bourbon, <laughs> which um, I don't know if you saw my Pappy, my greater than my, I did a top five bourbons better than Pappy video, uh, which I expected to get a whole lot of flack for. And I didn't, mm -hmm. um, which was kind of surprising, but it, it is, it's just whiskey guys. I mean, it's not, you know, it's fun to collect. It's fun to drink, but drink it, open those bottles. You know what I mean? Um, for sure. So anyway, sorry. Just a little side note. No, um, please. For, for love of God. Like I, I completely am with you there. It's, it's just whiskey and it's, it's good for sure. And sometimes it's better than others, but in general, you're, you're still just drinking alcohol with a little right. bit of flavor. You know, have, have you seen, um, the world sip with, um, Freddie Johnson or, um, not Freddie Johnson. Um, the guy from Buffalo trace, Freddie, um, no, it, if you have not seen no, the that, video, that, that, it is yeah. amazing. Uh, he's like third I generation mean, Buffalo trace guy. Um, been there forever. And he does a video and he talks about, um, he's probably in his sixties, seventies or so. And like I said, he's third generation. So, um, he goes through and talks about this guy. It's super awesome. I won't give any spoiler alerts, but when his grandfather worked there in the late 1800s, that warehouse across from the distillery was full of barrels of whiskey. Hmm. When he passed away and his father took over, that warehouse was full of barrels of whiskey. When his father passed away, they did a drive by with him in the casket of the distillery and the warehouse was full of bottles of whiskey. And you look over there today and it's still full of bottles of whiskey or barrels of whiskey. Huh. So there will always be more bourbon. There will always be yeah. older age bourbon. I mean, look at Knob Creek. They're still putting out 14, 15 year store picks. That's a good point. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah. They so, got a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah. So anyway, um, sorry. Total no. side rant. <laughs> <laughs> totally fine. Like, I mean, we, we shouldn't feel in a hurry. I mean, it, people should jump over to bourbon sane after, but like, if we're like, don't be in a hurry, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know? Um, so anyway, bourbon blind, uh, she picks the bottles. Um, people will put in requests for bottles either via the chat or an email bourbon blind tasting at gmail.com. And, um, she has a spreadsheet. She tries to keeps and tries to goes through, uh, different bottles of what everyone's picking mm -hmm. and she'll put the bottle. We have a black, bag we don't know what's in it and we go through we taste it usually me and one other person and we'll give our notes on it our thoughts on it and we give it a price we'd be willing to pay for it um instead of just an arbitrary you know like oh this is an 87 like cool <laughs> so does that mean like you like it a lot but not not a whole lot like what does that what does that mean um so that's just kind of our our thing on it um because we do we open pretty much everything we get you know, within reason, assuming there's not one open already. Um, yes. Yeah, so, I mean, it's, yeah, she opens bottles all the time and stuff. It's, that's yeah. what it's there for. You know, like, like Scott said, it's just whiskey, you know, nothing but, makes me happier than the fact that you used 87 as your, your almost like your jokingly just insignificant number only because in the past when I've talked about like how I, I don't give number ratings cause I feel like they're totally inconsequential it, it's and arbitrary, arbitrary to an extent, to right? and and I always say it's like everything's an eighty-seven, <laughs> especially when, <laughs> when you watch people uh, right. joke it's about not you know, perfect. Yeah, it, it's just like eighty-seven. Really, that's like saying, well, it's like a B. You know, it, it's right, it's, like high B, yeah. high B at that. But it's like, uh, so, so what does that? What does that, that mean? Do you want to pay fifty dollars for it? Do you want to pay twenty? Right. That, right. And that, that's that's you why know, I do the whole like ignore it, try it, buy it, stock it, right? right. Um, so I have a I have a suggestion for your okay. channel, if you awesome. haven't already done it. I hope you haven't. Um, the Woodford Reserve um, Malt Whiskey that that I, I, it's double malt or regular. Uh, hold on, it's um, yeah we did the, the or we did malt we did 
Oh, you uh, did it already? Uh, the Woodford Reserve straight malt whiskey. Yeah, that one. Yeah. I really like it. I did, you really? oh, did the cool. double malt. I know that for a fact. No, we did the double, the double barreled one. The double oaked is fantastic. Yeah, the double oaked. Double oaked. Yeah. That's what it is. Okay. There, there's another one where it's it's their malt whiskey. It's their newest mainline whiskey. The uh, the blue label one, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I actually looked at that tonight for something to grab, but um. Yeah. I, I do not I like that one at all. You don't? <laughs> no. And I am on the show then. I honestly couldn't be a bigger with uh, Woodford Reserve fan. I, I totally didn't hear what you said, Aaron. I'm sorry. It's okay. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. We we'll, we'll put it on the show then. I keep you telling should. people. Yeah, put give me the ones you like, but give me the ones you don't like. Yeah, and I keep threatening pot still, and uh, <laughs> haven't done it yet. Okay, and uh, it, it cracks me up when they get a bottle that they don't like because everyone like. I mean, there's so many bottles that are good, but mm -hmm. every once in a while, when there's a bad bottle, this the comments and the listening to them from another room just cracks <laughs> me up, especially when I know it's bad. So, yeah, send me the ones you don't like too. <laughs> So, um, so that's interesting. Scott, some Scott from Scott Shit's Dummy says that he liked the malt whiskey. I find that so funny. Like, I, I genuinely, I'm a huge Woodford Reserve fan. I've liked, I like their regular, their Distillery Select, their Double Oak, and their Rye like a lot. And I just didn't like the other one. It fell totally flat for me. Um, see, I, I really like the 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 straight malt, the Woodford straight malt one. I, I really enjoyed it. But maybe, I mean, maybe. hey, that's the magic of whiskey is everyone likes different stuff. Yeah, you, know I mean? you got a good point there. Yeah, um, I think it's part of the reason people watch who they watch too is that your palates tend to line up. So, I think a lot of like, I think a lot of our channels really do overlap. Mm -hmm. Which watchers like Richie Z? Yeah, any live stream I hop into, Richie's in there commenting, and you know what I mean. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, no, he's in every every chat. Actually, he probably knows whiskey better than all of us just based off how many uh, live streams he's seen. Right? <laughs> he's probably more in the know than any of us yeah um, richie are you still in the chat by any chance just out of curiosity um mm. like i don't like i said i'm not a big scotch guy um mm -hmm. i definitely don't like smoky pd stuff sorry scott um yeah. you don't like but, a young pete <laughs> that's that's just not my thing I, um <laughs> probably my favorite whiskey related <laughs> joke um oh by the way, sorry, I'm, I'm going to cut you off one more time just because I keep forgetting. I, I've gotten the super chats to, to have to do this. I, I know we're trying to get off the air here. Um, I don't want to, you know, be that guy that reneges on a uh, essentially a bet. So here's some bookers. Decent amount. I'm going to throw this back and uh, yeah. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Cheers. So yeah, it's a hefty bottle. 63.35. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Whiskey Throttle said, do I mean Bart? Yes, I know Bart is the Pete lover. Yeah. Um, but I'm pretty sure Scott's probably the one in the chat. But um, yeah. Either way. Oh, did I, did I, I, when I, I said young I, Pete, that's a, that's a Bart thing. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, like I just, I just can't do the Petey thing and um, the, I don't know, Scotch to me, a lot of like, even the non peated ones, they have like this, like medicinal office, um, doctor's office, hmm. glove taste, like medicinal kind of, sorry. <laughs> once, once you get more used to it, once you get more used to it, you get a little bit more out of there, but that's absolutely where everybody starts out. Um, so Carnegie's farm, farm buckler, um, totally where we started. Um, not necessarily where we were going to spend an hour worth of talking about, but, uh, actually, you know, why don't we do this just, just for the sake of the fact that it was the topic of conversation. What is your, uh, if you had to say whether somebody should buy this or attempt to try it, assuming they could find it in a bar, would you say this is something they should buy or try? If it's near retail, I say buy it. Buy it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would completely it. agree. I would actually say slightly over retail. Um, yeah. but I think you said Under 50 bucks all day long. This, yeah, I, I agree. Under $50. This is worth picking up for sure. So, um, evening, Jen. Sorry. Uh, yeah. So bourbon professor, <laughs> some of these people's names are hilarious. They but, really uh, are. Yeah. Anyway. All right. Let's, let's pop off. I know you, you kind of gave your last sign off. Um, yep. where can people find you? Uh, 
obviously YouTube, uh, number one. <laughs> um, Facebook and Instagram are the big things. Uh, Twitter is basically just a copy of whatever we put on Instagram. Um, and that's that's about it. Uh, we're talking about doing our own Facebook group. Uh, don't really know yet or not. Um, we'll just kind of have to see how that goes. But Excellent. Excellent. Um, all right. Well, thank you very much for being on the show tonight. It was awesome. I, I uh, genuinely enjoyed our time together. And Aaron, I'm so happy that you uh, decided to join us. It was it was much better uh, than staring at his face. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> well, thank you, everybody, for joining us here on the Whiskey Dictionary. And I hope to see you uh, next week. See you later. Bye. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.